And people to dismiss these questioners as conspiratorial advocates or uh, conspiratorial theorists, that's completely out of line because the, the questions remain because the, the president who sh should be able to answer them will not. We have plenty of evidence that the attack on Afghanistan uh, was planned. Uh, because after the negotiations with the Taliban broke down in the United States, I think they went to Houston in Texas uh, in about July, and there were later discussions at about this time in Berlin, uh, where U.S. Uh, officials made absolutely clear to the Taliban representatives in this famous phrase, uh, either uh, we will provide you with a carpet of gold, in other words, if you supply a pipeline across Afghanistan, uh, you ensure the security of the country, you guard that pipeline, then we can do a deal with you, otherwise we will bury you in a carpet of bombs. In the years since 9-11, scores of highly regarded individuals have gone public to express their serious doubts about 9-11. These include former President presidential advisor and CIA analyst Ray McGovern, the father of Reaganomics and former assistant secretary of the U.S. Treasury, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, BYU physics professor Stephen Jones, former German defense minister Andres von Bülow, former MI5 officer David Shaler, former Blair cabinet member Michael Meacher, former chief economist for the Department of Labor during President George W. Bush's first term, Dr. Morgan Reynolds, and many more. Out of the countless prominent personalities questioning the official 9-11 fable, Gore Vidal, award-winning author and historian, has raised some of the most important points. You spoke about some of your questions concerning 9-11 and how your father had helped write some of the rules for intercept. Can you speak to your questions concerning 9-11, please? Well, there was a, a big story about uh, in the India Times which is a very good newspaper, and it was about 9-11. And we had just found out, the world had found out, that Mohammed Atta, who was a Saudi Arabian guy, but seemingly working for Os Osama bin Laden, that he was in charge of the planes that crashed into the New York buildings. Well, the, the story is really more complicated. What struck me immediately, when my father was director of air commerce under Franklin Roosevelt, my father, who was been one of the original Army Air Force flyers in World War I, uh, he had put in a lot of sort of safety things. In the event of a hijacking of a passenger liner or any plane that they knew about, that fighter planes would be scrambled, that is, sent up into air immediately within minutes in order to force the plane down, to change course, shoot it down if you had to. And you don't need orders from the president, the vice president, or anybody else. That's the law. Well, they didn't go up after 9-11. Everybody knew what had happened. And the planes were still on their way to Washington to hit the Pentagon, when suddenly from Otis Air Base comes one fighter plane. Otis Air Base is in Massachusetts. Might just as well have been in Canada. That was the only fighter plane which, according to law, they all should have been up there. And not one went up. Well, that could only happen if somebody had told them to stand down, not to respond to what was, after all, their sworn duty. That's the Times of India broke the story, and then that well-known radical rag, the Wall Street Journal, also wrote about it. I thought by then, places like the New York Times would have waked up, but the New York Times is incapable of waking up to anything important. Months before 9-11, on June 1, 2001, Dick Cheney ordered then Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld to issue this order to NORAD and the Pentagon. The document revoked their standing orders to shoot down errant or hijacked aircraft and instructed them to stand down until they were given orders by the President, Vice President, or Secretary of Defense. Then on 9-11, NORAD and the Pentagon waited for over an hour while the attacks were taking place for the orders to defend America that never came. Here is Transportation Secretary Norman Mineta testifying before the 9-11 Commission about an aide coming in to the Vice President 
on the morning of 9-11 as what was reported as Flight 77 was approaching the Pentagon. From the exchange, it is clear that Dick Cheney was ordering an ongoing stand down. Um, I wanted to focus just a moment on the uh, Presidential Emergency Operating Center. <clears throat> you were there uh, for a good part of the day. I think you were there with the Vice President. And uh, we had that order given, I think it was by the President, that uh, authorized uh, the shooting down of commercial aircraft that were suspected to be controlled by terrorists. Um, were you there when that order was given? No, I, I was not. I was made aware of it uh, during the time that the airplane coming in to the Pentagon, uh, there was a young man who would come in and say to the vice president, the, the plane is 50 miles out, the plane is 30 miles out. And when it got down to the plane is 10 miles out, uh, the young man also said to the vice president, do the orders still stand? And uh, the vice president turned and whipped his neck around and said, of course the orders still stand. Have you heard anything to the contrary? Well, at the time, I didn't know what all that meant. And um, the flight you're referring to is the, the one flight that came into the Pentagon. Pentagon. Vice President Dick Cheney had bound the hands of the military behind their backs, and he was refusing to cut them. On the fifth anniversary of the September 11th coup against America, thousands of citizens took to the streets of New York to expose the cover-up. The people are sick and tired of the real perpetrators of 9-11, grandstanding like heroes and using the tragedy as a pretext to turn America into an Orwellian police state. Once everybody gets here, we're going to all get together, we're going to go over to Ground Zero. We're here to get the information out. We're here to talk to the media. We're here to make sure that the official story continues to collapse. We're here to expose the terrorists, the people that really carried out 9-11, the criminals inside the military industrial complex. The vast majority of New York firefighters and police that we spoke with, off the record, said they knew that 9-11 was an inside job. Yeah. 